Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode six of the Calypso Cigar Review. This is Brandon Luna, and I'm here with Randy Rankin. Today we are reviewing the Pedro Martin Fiera. And we're looking at the torpedo size here. Six and a fourth by 52. Okay. And we're here at the Richardson, or at the Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge in Richardson, Texas. Mm -hmm. As, As always. always. Yep. Thanks to Matt Badowski, who is the owner-operator. Absolutely. Still laid up, unfortunately, so he's not going to be here again with us today, but hopefully soon. We promise Matt will be on one of these one day. Yes. And It'll we'll, be a pleasant surprise. It will be. It will be. So the uh, Pedro Martin Fierro is a, a not really everywhere, is it? No, it's not. Uh, it's, it's, it's a smaller boutique. Uh, you, it's popping up more frequently in places, but at the moment it's still fairly limited. Mm. It's got a nice open cold draw. Yeah, the cold draw is really spicy on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't even need to smoke this. It's just... Very nice. Do we have a, a soft light today? Soft no. light? No, I didn't do soft light today. Dang it, man. Well, we're going to light off the mic here, so we'll find one. Yeah. And uh, now this is a Nicaraguan, uh, pretty much a Nicaraguan Puro. Yeah, it's a Nicaraguan, right? yeah, Nicaraguan Maduro wrapper, mm -hmm. a Nicaraguan Criollo binder, mm -hmm. and a Nicaraguan Corojo filler. So all kinds of Nicaraguan here, which is great because I'm a big Nicaraguan fan. Yeah, we're fan. big Nicaraguan guys. So, so this, this should be, this will be my first one of these. Your uh, first one, probably my third, uh, but my first one in a few months. God, it even smells spicy at the foot. I mean, mm -hmm. you just smell that spice. We're going to yeah. go ahead and light these off mic and we'll be right back. All right, so we got everything lit and we're ready to go on this first third here. Uh, right off the bat, it's um, very spicy, just as I expected with the Nicaraguan Maduro. And um, the room notes are excellent. Yeah, the room note's really good on it. It actually has a, a pseudo-sweet kind of smell to it. Mm -hmm. um, Not necessarily of... an aromatic pipe tobacco, but no, it's no. similar to a pipe tobacco. Yeah, it is similar to a pipe tobacco, but yeah. it's um, just got a real great room note. Like, I think you could probably get away with smoking this in a semi-public place and people not be super offended by the smell, which a lot of people don't like cigar smell, and they're which just I think weird. Is ridiculous. Yeah, I know. Now, I could yeah. see not, you know, on the clothes after, okay, yeah, okay, well, it, it gets a little stale, but as far as... The room note of a cigar. You get That's a good why cigar. for breeze. Exactly. Yeah. You get a good cigar. It smells pretty damn wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, so you got a lot of spice on this. You got. Um, Ooh, I just uh, retrohaled. <laughs> I'll get you. There's some spice there. Yeah, there's definitely some spice. That on was there. a little little burn. It was a good way. It was a good burn. Definitely a full full flavored cigar. I'd say it's still probably medium um, bodied. Well, we'll see where it goes. Medium to full. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I've um, had it before. Obviously, it's uh, got a. Beautiful wrapper on it. It's almost got like a, you know, a reddish kind of. Yeah, it's got a, a red, here. red tinge to it. Um, there is some veining on it, but it's not invasive. It's not out in your face. It doesn't. It's just a little toothy, I think. You know, a lot of people rip on the veining. I, I don't mind a little. I don't think that adds some character to it, as long as, as you said, it's not intrusive. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's not sticks or twigs or oh, something yeah, coming poking no, out no, of it or anything no, like no, that. When I compliment a cigar on its veins, I, that's what I mean. It's just it's uh, almost a leathery veininess, and yeah. and I, I like that. Yeah, you know they're delicate creatures. They're not all, you know, exactly. If they were exactly 100% perfect. There wouldn't be need for cigar reviews. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, definitely a great, great flavor in the cigar. It's definitely some spice, a little bit of leather. Mm -hmm. um, almost. Let me see on the retro hell. I got something here. Let me see if I get it again. There's a lot of spice on the retro hell. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, mean, like what straight up pepper, yeah. straight up pepper. In on a the good retro. way. It's a good wow. burn, but it's a burn. Ah, yeah, my it's eyes. A burn. <laughs> <laughs> my eyes. No, but like <laughs> underneath that though, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a nuttiness to it, mm. um, slight, ever so slight, Very hidden slight. behind the pepper. Yeah. But, but um, you don't get that just smoking the cigar though. You really have to retrohale it. But that's not for the uh, faint at heart. If you don't smoke no. a whole lot of cigars or you smoke mild stuff, I would not recommend that because that is going to burn you out. It's uh, must mention that we're pairing today again. Uh, we, oh yeah, we haven't paired a lot, but we're pairing this with some Johnny Walker Black. Yummy. I'm a fan of the single malt, so single malt fans don't jump all over us. But uh, for a blend, Johnny Walker Black is a very nice scotch. Most of the Johnny Walker stuff's good anyway. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it goes really well with this particular cigar because it's got, uh, Johnny Walker's got a little bit of a bite to it, but it goes along with the cigar really nicely. Yeah, they complement each other uh, very well. Yeah, you blow that, you get that sip of that Johnny Walker in your nose and you blow it out and in your nose. <laughs> Take a sip of Johnny yeah, I, Walker. I don't usually drink Johnny Walker through my <laughs> nose, but... Yeah, pour it in your nose like a neti pot. Not that I have anything against then... <laughs> people who drink it through their nose. Go for it. But... Yeah. You put the syringe in your nose. <laughs> no, but yeah, you take that Johnny Walker sip and you blow it out your nose and you get that mixed with a cigar and it's a nice little flavor there. Oh, we must mention, uh, for any of you 
what, what listening to this on YouTube or iPod or iPod iTunes, which mm. I guess you could download to your iPod. You're listening on the yeah. iPod, <laughs> Grandpa. And uh, yeah, well, that, that's data technology. IPod. I know, right? It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. uh, feel free to leave leave us comments. Matter of fact, we we welcome the comments. Let us know uh, certain topics that you'd like for us to, to discuss, certain cigars you'd like for us to review. Uh, Things that you think we're doing well, things that you think we can improve on. We, we welcome any and all feedback, and we appreciate it. You know, th this is really taking off. We thank you all for that. We're getting mm -hmm. uh, tons of hits uh, from all over the country. Uh, we have that tracking system, you know, what was it? Yeah. Australia or something? Holland. Like Someone was listening yeah. in Holland. I'm like, cool. That know? is great. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, so definitely leave those comments. We're all over the place. We're on YouTube. We got the, uh, the video slideshow with uh, usually, typically, there's pictures of the cigars on there as well as pictures of nice ladies from the uh, Cigar Vixen calendar that I shot last year. Uh, we were on iTunes, so you can subscribe to us on iTunes. We definitely appreciate that. If you put a comment on the iTunes as well, because you can do a five-star rating, put some reviews on there, and that, that puts us uh, a peg up the list so it's easier to find for new people looking for us on iTunes. Uh, we're also on Podomatic and Spreaker, and both of those you can um, stream it from there um, individually. You can also comment on there. Uh, so definitely check us out. We're all over the place. And I think soon we're going to be on Slam Internet Radio, which is going to be another source where you can find us. So That's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. We're, to we're getting out there. We appreciate all the input, um, and we live and die by you guys listening, so definitely keep listening. I have a question for you, Brandon, because mm -hmm. I'm going to tell a story I've never told anyone. Okay. I don't even know that I've even thought of this story in years. Okay. But what was your first exposure to a cigar? I'm talking as a child. Okay. Um, my grandfather smoked cigars. Okay. And he spent some time, um, I want to say in Miami, because he has some family there. I remember hearing stories about that. So he's probably smoking Cubans and stuff over there. Who knows? But he well, smoked cigars. Day, so yeah. yeah, way probably. back in the, well, whoever knows, yeah, way back when. So I used to see him smoke cigars. And I had a, a, an uncle of mine, Uncle Che, who would chew cigars. Okay. So he'd sit on a chair on a hot summer day and mm -hmm. just chew a cigar and, you know, but take a bite off of it, chew it up, spit it out, you know, okay. that's what he did. Right. Didn't ever smoked them, but he chewed them. So that was really my first um, two exposures to cigars. I never yeah. smoked one until probably high school. Right. I don't think I smoked, I didn't smoke one until my mid-20s, but uh, I remember one time, you know, I was like five or six years old, and uh, my parents were, we were raised Baptists, so they were no smoking, no drinking, no anything. Uh, every now and then I think my mom would have a glass of wine and my dad might have a vodka Collins or something. But those were rare days. Well, one day, I, some, a friend of the family must have had a baby or something because he was given a cigar. And mm -hmm. I was I was kind of pestered him, Dad, are you going to smoke that cigar? going to smoke that cigar. And he says, yeah, I'll, well, I'll wait till Saturday and we'll smoke it. I'll smoke it on Saturday. So I couldn't wait. I don't know why I was so excited for my dad to smoke a cigar. I just, you know, you'd see him in movies. I thought it was kind of cool looking. Yeah. But I didn't know anything about the process. He didn't have a cutter, so we're all sitting around the kitchen table. We're going to watch my dad smoke this cigar. Yeah. This was pre-internet and TV. Everyone yeah. thought it was, this TV, was your, cable TV and stuff. So, yeah, this, this was, was your our Saturday night yeah. entertainment. Watch my dad smoke a cigar. Thing. Exactly. So uh, he didn't have a cutter, so he bit the end off, and I thought, that's kind of cool. Yeah, he Eastwooded it. Yeah, very, very, very Western. Mm -hmm. And then he, he lit it up, and he smoked it, and I don't think he finished it. He, you know, he wasn't a smoker. But the whole process fascinated me. Mm -hmm. And I would literally, I'm not lying, this is the part I've never told before, I would go to the refrigerator and get out a hot dog <laughs> and bite the end off, you know, because it has yeah. that little funky end on it. Yeah, anyway. yeah. I'd bite the end off, spit it out, and I'd walk around <laughs> with this hot dog in my mouth pretending it was a cigar. And then, you know, hilarious. my mom would catch me, and what are you doing? <laughs> not that I'm eating a hot dog, you know? I, I just was... and. You know, Freud and, and Dr. Phil would have a field day. That's your first exposure to cigars. Right. That sets you on the path to the iniquity. <laughs> but, uh, you Thank can, you, Dr. You know, Phil. That was a great Dr. Phil impersonation, I know. Awesome. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that, that stuck with me. Why I've never told that story, I don't know, but I, I just, you That's know. funny. And so, you know, in my mid-20s, I remember bite, I bit the end off my first cigar because I had mm -hmm. to. My dad did it the first time I ever saw him, you know. Yeah. And that, that just stuck with me. Pretty That's cool. funny. See, I remember, you know, okay, talk about, like, things leading you to things. Like, uh -huh. I remember being a kid back in the day, they had the uh, the candy cigarettes. Mm -hmm. They were the ones that, 
You know, it was either they were candy or they were bubble gum. Well, the cigars were bubble gum. Yeah, the cigars the were cigarettes bubble gum. for the mo- well, they had bubble gum cigarettes. Yeah, they had bubble gum cigarettes. Yeah, but you it was could the, blow the powder. Remember? Yeah, that? you'd put it in your mouth, you would blow the powder out, and it looked like smoke. Right. And then you'd eat it, and it tastes like crap. It was like the worst bubble gum ever. It was like <laughs> the, the stuff that came with the bad. Yeah, but the bubble gum was terrible. The bubble like gum was like card? The baseball card yeah. bubble gum. Yeah, yeah. it's like you cut your mouth on it because it snaps in half, and you know, just ugh, horrible <laughs> stuff. But uh, and then the cards always smelled like that powdery bubblegum crap oh, was yeah. awful terrible, but, terrible. Yeah, but see I would eat the crap out of those bubblegum cigarettes and, and uh, the uh, candy cigarettes and never smoke cigarettes it just never right. yeah, it didn't, yeah. appealed to me I mean, that's, I, like, that's I why smoked. they get rid of them because it's going to leave people they yeah. leave smoke. I smoked cigarettes like you know in college um, spring break that mm-hmm. type of thing because people were doing it but I never liked it I never inhaled it was right. just bleh, you know they just tasted like crap right. compared to cigars first time I had a cigar it was just like, uh, you know, I had no idea what the heck I was doing. I was out with friends, and we went to the, you know, little shop and got a Macanudo, whatever, right. Portofino probably. And, um, you know, we all just kind of worked our way through it. One guy knew what he was doing, and we just kind of all followed him. And that was just a totally different experience because it's the experience of sitting and hanging out and, with your friends and doing it. And, you know, like you said before, right. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I probably didn't really enjoy the cigar, but it was the process of it. Well, I, I actually enjoyed my First cigar, yeah. I was at I was at a, a pub. It was a karaoke night or something, and this guy was smoking a cigar, and I said, "That is so cool! I've always wanted to smoke a cigar." And you know, my wife's like, "Why haven't you? You know, you're twenty something. <laughs> you're in your twenties. Why haven't you? I, don't, I never dawned on me, you know." I mean, yeah. So uh, he he said, "Well, here, I'll give you one." And I said, "That's okay. No, I want you to have one." Mm-hmm. He said, "It'll be an honor to smoke, be, you know, be with you on your first cigar." I said, okay. "That's cool." And it was a Macanudo Prince Philip, which is the big Churchill. It's a huge cigar, mm-hmm. especially for someone who'd never smoked one before. And yeah, I loved the first half of it, but by then it was just too much, and I, I might maybe got a little green. I'm not quite sure, but yeah, I was I was in love from that point on, and uh, I didn't smoke as much. We've talked about that before. Yeah, but uh, it took me a few years before I really got into smoking them a lot. But I I loved my first cigar experience. Yeah. I loved it after the probably the second or third when I really kind of figured out what it was. And, you know, this is back when there really was no Internet to mm-hmm. say. And, you know, you basically just would go to a and m and learn from them how to do what you're wanting to do. Right. And from people that you knew. And uh, so you start to get to where, you know, I was in my 20s and going to poker games with friends and mm-hmm. maybe smoking cigars. Mm-hmm. So I'd smoke cigars with them. We'd all go, you know, buy cigars together, come back, play poker. And it just became what we did. And um, I really loved it at that point. And I did it for about two and a half years okay. and then just quit for about 18. <laughs> so I'm just back to it now <laughs> in the past year and a half. And it's, um, you know, just a much more enjoyable experience this time around. And um, I really just enjoy the whole culture of it, really. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's, a, it's a fraternity. I don't yeah. know if you've... Uh, you know, the listeners that listened to the Rick Polar interview we did a while back, you know, we, we were talking about that it's a community, yeah, it's a family. It, it really is a family. And they even have a term for it. It's the Brothers of the Leaf. You yeah, know, when you absolutely. Have people that are um, smoking cigars or pipers and, you know, those guys, they just uh, hang together. And there's a great community of people that like to share their knowledge and share their tastes. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it really is a brotherhood. It's almost like, you know, I wouldn't say it's as much of a brotherhood as the Marines, but it's definitely up there. It's, it's, yeah, it's definitely up there. Yeah. Okay, I have a question for you. Sure. I was speaking of feedback earlier. You said there was some feedback about oh, yeah. our babe segment from a on few our weeks list. ago. It's or? funny because you get two kinds of feedback. You get you know, people who are like, oh, man, that's awesome. I was thinking the same thing. Or you get people who are like, oh, your list was bogus. You know, And we got a guy that was like ripping on our on our um, hot babes list because right. he said we had a lot of hot babes from TV instead of from movies. He said Hollywood's not, you know, Hollywood's movies. Hollywood isn't TV. Where do they film the mo- the TV shows? They're Hollywood, filmed in right? California. Okay, yeah, they filmed in okay. Hollywood. Right. Yeah, some are filmed in New York, but the majority of them are filmed in Hollywood. So I think, you know, bully to that. Whatever you think, you know, whatever. I don't agree with you. But we, if you want to revise our list, let's say, you know, to be. Want to stick to TV? We can just do TV. We'll do just do, like, list. top five TV babes. Okay. And we'll do a TV one this week, and maybe we'll do a movie one later or next week or whatever. Okay. Well, I guess I have to stick with my original list to a degree okay. since there were TV people in there. I'll stick with Elizabeth Montgomery at five. Okay. Classic beauty face. Yeah, definitely. She's hottie. Yeah. I like that. Uh, I'm going to go um, with another classic beauty from my youth, uh, watching repeats of Dick Van Dyke. I'm going to go with Mary Tyler Moore. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. She was um, those beautiful. Capris oh, those capris. Oh, just a great geez. everything, yeah. Absolutely Hot. gorgeous. Girl next door, beautiful girl. You know, there's a funny story. Funny, Rob, too. Rob Reiner 
got kicked off the set of the Dick Van Dyke show because he either pinched her butt or, or slapped her butt or really? punched her butt. Wasn't he a writer on the yeah, show? No, his dad was. Oh, okay. He was just a kid. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> he was banned from the Dick Van Dyke show. So Rob set. Reiner, got, Rob not Reiner, Carl Reiner, but Carl Rob Reiner. Reiner kicked Rob Reiner off the set wow. of the Dick Van Dyke show. Okay, number four. Number four. Cuatro. Cuatro. Let's go with the great... Erin Gray from Buck Rogers. Oh, yeah, that skin-tight little outfit she wore. And she was also on Silver Spoons. She was. She was very milfy on Silver Spoons. Yeah, yes. I let's we'll see that, yeah. Uh, number four for me is going to be, um, hmm, I'm going to go Goldie Hawn from Laugh-In. Kind of a movie person. Yeah, but, but she was she on laugh on TV. She okay. started on TV. Okay. Well, okay, fine, I'll revise it. No, Laugh-In, Goldie week. Hawn's fine. I can even go, well, our listeners are going to come Yeah, on, so. whatever, listeners, <laughs> I'm flipping you off right now. Good. Um, so Goldie Hawn for me, she was a, you know, I watched the show because of her, and then I stayed because it was funny. And she had a nice touch. Yeah, she had a great butt. Great legs, too. Yeah. Not, no rack, though, so I can't No remember. rack, yeah. no, but, you know. Oh, okay. She was just really cute. She just was, like, girl next door. She was adorable. Adorable, little cutesy. Well, I'm going to go Homer. You know, we're here in the Dallas area. I'm okay. going to go with someone off Dallas. Oh, yeah? The great Victoria Principal. Oh, yeah. She, she was, was uh... amazing in the 80s. She was not aged well, but in the 80s, good gravy. I would stop. I'd be walking through the living room and just stop to wait, see my parents watching Dallas, just mm -hmm. wait to see Victoria Principal, hoping that she'd be swimming or something. You know? <laughs> perv. <laughs> we're we're men. Yeah, men we're men. is code for perv. Exactly, go exactly. Ahead. It's the same thing. It's synonymous. It is. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, um, Wonder Woman, Linda Carter. Oh, wow. That's hard to beat. Yeah, That's she was, uh, that was one of those shows. It was right around the time, like, was it? Wonder Woman and the Hulk were around oh, the yeah, same time yeah, when TV was doing the whole TV was doing the whole superhero thing. And uh, what I liked about her was that she had the kind of when she was dressed down, she kind of looked like someone's hot mom or mm -hmm. like a hot teacher or something. Oh, yeah. And then you saw her in that outfit and it was like, what? Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, number. You two. can lasso me anytime <laughs> with the truth lasso. This girl was number two on my last list, and she'll stay number two on this list because she won't expose herself. Mm -hmm. Or so she shows just enough to make you want to see more, and she won't give you more. I know who Jennifer Love about. Hewitt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she'll be my number two too. She's stuck with her. It's yeah, hard to beat Jennifer yeah. Love Hewitt. Oh, and she's been since that new show, The Client List oh, or whatever. God. I, I, I yeah. love all the still frames she's Those doing. Like ads, all the all the ads are doing. just like oh, <laughs> easy. And she can sing too. She's not she's a bad got, singer. And I love girls that can sing. And yeah. Okay, number one, a little cliche, I guess. Some people love her like I do. Some people are annoyed by her. But I'm going to mm -hmm. go with. Uh, Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. Huh? I don't know. She's more movies now, but she'll always be she, Rachel. Yeah, she was always. I mean, she'll ten what ten Rachel. freaking years on TV. Yeah, yeah, she counts as a TV personality. So. I'm going to go the opposite end of that. I'm going to pick a friend as well. Oh, and okay. it's not Lisa Kudrow. Please it's no. It's Courtney Please Cox. No. Okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Courtney Cox. Courtney Cox. I had the hots for her in Family Ties, and uh, gotcha. it just carried over to uh, Friends. And she was a little less annoying to me than. Uh, well, but she had her inter in her weird things yeah, too. Her but, anal. Yeah, cleaning stuff. Uh, she never old. did anal on the show. I don't think. No, <laughs> she didn't. <do> it. <laughs> nice but term. No, yeah, but uh, no, I I loved her in Family Ties. Mm -hmm. Actually, I didn't like her character, but I thought she was cute. Yeah. I didn't know about the Bruce Springs. I never really thought about that being the same girl from the Springsteen video. But yeah, but uh, no, nothing wrong with Courtney Cox. I thought she was amazing in Ace Ventura. I thought oh she was yeah, gorgeous she was in that hot movie. In that. And then uh, Three Thousand Miles to Graceland. There's a scene where she's wearing these tight jeans. Mm -hmm. She's on a ladder. Yeah, and Kurt Russell's face is like six inches from her tush, and I was just wanting to be Kurt Russell. At that <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, Kurt Russell, and Goldie Hawn. Yeah, that's Goldie Hawn still. Yeah, that's okay, right. There we go. Nice little tie in there. Yeah, and I think Nothing they even did movies together. She was uh, she looked mighty fine in Overboard. Overboard. Yes, she yeah, did. A little thong bikini thing going on there. Absolutely. So, uh, okay, is that a proper list, folks? I think that's a proper okay. list for right. the TV side of things. Yeah, okay. we can deal with that. All right. All right, so we're up, uh, coming up on the end of the first third here, and uh, so far so good. I haven't had this one before, so for me, um, look at that ash, man. I know. That's at least that an is, inch and a half. That's an That's inch and a half two ash, yeah. yeah, of just awesomeness, and it's a great-looking ash. My burn is, like, almost razor sharp here, mm -hmm. and uh, this is a, a really great cigar so far. I hadn't even heard of this. I, mean, I, I hadn't thought about asking us to review it, and it just popped in my head right before we did And who's, who makes this again? It's, it's uh, Pedro Martin. Pedro Martin. It's the Pedro Martin family of cigars. Okay. And this is the Fiera. We're smoking the six and a quarter by 52 Torpedo. Torpedo. And, and at the end of the show, we will have a special offer for our listeners. Oh, on awesome. This, on this okay. wonderful cigar. All right, so that'll finish up the first third. We'll be right back with the second third, guys.
All right, everybody, we're back for the second third on the Pedro, Pedro Martin Fiera. Fiera. I'll get it. I'll get it eventually. Yeah, so far, tasty. I love. I really do love the room note on this, and that's you know hard to say with a lot of cigars. Mm -hmm. um, but it has a very good kind of sweet smell to it. Are you starting to notice any complexity? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not the medium body at the beginning. It's more it's going more to full. Yeah, retro still retrohale. Yeah, that retrohale. The retrohale is not as bad now. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a little milder, but it has a lot of flavor on that retrohale. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some leather. There's some spice. Um, I'm not getting the nuttiness that I had before. Mm -hmm. I think that may have just been a one-time deal. What's the term I'm looking for? Not floral. Well, maybe kind of floral. Floral on the palate a little bit. Flavor wheel? You want yeah. to address the flavor wheel again? No, I think the flavor wheel. We can put a re put to rest for a little while. <laughs> Butterscotch. Okay. Butterscotch, yeah. Okay, right. guys. Although I've since heard a guy, once again, give me a review of a cigar. Yeah, it, buddy. He was here the in, other day. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. He said butterscotch. I'm like, I'm like really, uh, dude? Butterscotch? Were you okay. eating a butterscotch at the time? Because <laughs> exactly. maybe that was the... Uh, some butterscotch pudding before yeah. you <laughs> Oh, and if you get butterscotch, please Good tell us. You. Yeah, no. tell us which cigars you're getting it on because I want to try it and see if I get it. Because I've never picked that up. Not that I'm a big butterscotch fan, but I think it might be kind of cool in a cigar. It might be. You never know. Now, the uh, actual scotch with the cigar has been very good. Oh, yeah. It's Johnny JWB. Damn, man. Just downed it. I like I like my stuff. I like my scotch. I like my whiskey. I do, too, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sip it and savor, savor it. it. Savor it. Yep. We're drinking it out of a nice little snifter here in the Richardson. I'm gonna, I'm gonna the, uh, do Calypso I'm gonna, cigar shop and lounge in Richardson, Texas. Yes, I'm gonna dip it into the. Scott, no, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> Moron. <laughs> so you told snob, that story. I think Cigar Snob's first ep uh, episode, first uh, edition, mm -hmm. they had uh, cigar faux pas in there, and Dipping. one of them was the dipper. Yeah, yeah. the dipper. So yeah, yeah, let's talk about uh, cigar people in general. I think that there's a defined group of people that smoke cigars mm -hmm. uh, i think you, you know with anything you can label things and i don't want to necessarily label it as good and bad but right. there's definitely the noob the right. guy that's new to cigars that doesn't really have a lot of knowledge on it just kind of smokes what his friend smokes and mm -hmm. you know he's trying to find his way mm -hmm. and i think the noob will generally um pretty much smoke what you put in his hand um doesn't really have a well-defined palate but yeah. knows what he likes and doesn't like yeah. um and then i think when you get past the noob stage you, uh, typically, noobs aren't going to have humidors. If anything, they'll they'll buy it as they smoke it, or they'll have a Tupperware, or they'll, you know, start to get interested in a humidor. You know, at that point, and Some then people store them in cigar boxes. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. You know, with the boba to pack or whatever. Right. And I actually did that before. I, I've got a um, what was that one cigar that you guys did? The La Sierra. La Serena. La Serena. Yeah. That box is great. It's got a decent seal on it. Mm -hmm. I use that as a humidor with the Boba to pack in it. It's a nice, po nice box. Yeah. I work. like seasoned it and everything and yeah. worked great. I gave it to my mom because my mom smokes cigars. So. Does she really? Yeah. Awesome. We smoke cigars in the backyard every once in a while like, awesome. when she comes and visits. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, yeah. So, we, um, so I think that's the, what the cigar noob kind of does. And then he develops his palate a little more and then he becomes one of two kinds of cigar smokers. You got the cigar snob. Right. Who's going to only really smoke certain stuff he has a defined palette he wants either you know and there there's kind of a cigar douchery there yeah. <laughs> when you get into the there, cigar there smob cigar douchey, yeah douchey when you get smog, into yeah. the douchebaggery kind of kicks in and it's like all about the fuente and the padrone and those guys typically will leave the band on when they're smoking and they talk about what they're smoking like i'm smoking an opus x right now guys and check and out the opus x keychain down on the table that says shows they have a lexus or something yeah or a ferrari yeah. they yeah. got the ferrari yeah. keychain yeah. and the ferrari cutter and yeah. stuff that costs yeah. like a million dollars or whatever right. but you know so you have that guy, the cigar snob, and then they'll, they'll also branch off, and you have the uh, the hard to find cigar smoker who they get kind of stuck in a rut, and they they probably spent too much time online like me, and they want to get those cigars that are limited release and they're hard to get. Right. And um, but those guys, what I found, and I know a few of those guys, they don't smoke cigars. No. <laughs> they they buy them and they keep them, and they just you know they don't smoke them. It's like what are you doing, you know? And they'll and a lot of times those guys will still be kind of really cigar noobs. And they'll still be smoking a lot of house blends and a lot of stuff and still developing their palate. But in the yeah. meantime, they're building this huge humidor full of stuff that you can never find two years from now. And, you know, I know several people like that. Yeah. You know, I, I, since I work here at a cigar store, I don't have cigars. I mean, I keep a few at the house. So mm -hmm. I can smoke one in the evening or whatever <clears throat> because I don't need to. I mean, I have access to yeah. cigars. Prior to, you know, my experience here, I still was buying what I smoked, but I would mm -hmm. buy for the week and I'd plan out my week and what I was going to smoke for the week. Mm -hmm. So I still never, ever had a lot of cigars at one time. I would have just enough for a week. You know, I might have 15 cigars on Monday and have two by Friday, you know? So I never really had a lot of cigars at one point. Mm 
Uh, and, you know, we, there was a customer another day at a funny line. He was listening to Brandon and another of our customers talk about all these cigars they have stored up. And the guy was smoking a cigar, and he looked at it. He goes, well, I've got two-thirds of one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you, you, you've got those people that... You grad, I think, and I think probably what you graduate towards, the, the top tier is going to be the, the brother of the leaf, and it's the guy that, you know... He's getting to the point where he's he's not buying five packs anymore. He's he's buying boxes of stuff that he knows he likes. He's also the kind of guy that shares his knowledge, yeah. that shares his cigars. Um, I'm the kind of guy where I'll take a um, um, a five like a little herfador in mm-hmm. to cigar shops with me, right. and I'll have a couple that you know if someone's asking about something and they haven't smoked it, if I happen to have one, I'll give them one. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and um, I think that's what you kind of grow into if you stay with it long enough, is you become a solid brother of the leaf. Guy that loves smoking cigars, knows what he likes, smokes good stuff, smokes bad stuff, smokes everything. Um, you know, he's not afraid to to get the house blend and enjoy those, but also likes the Fuentes and the Padrones, and you know, has a well defined palate and likes to share his knowledge and share the experience with other people. And I think that's where you get to eventually. Exactly. And, and I th- think and those are the ones that are most enjoyable. For you. Yeah, definitely. Not just because they'll give you a stick every now and then, but you know, it's it's the com- camaraderie, it's the conversation mm-hmm. that you can have mm-hmm. regarding you know. Your collection or what you've had in the past, mm-hmm. you know. And oh, fine. What's that? Go ahead. No, go ahead. You'll I don't find remember it. now. Go ahead. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I kind of butted in. Sorry. And well, I wanted to discuss something somebody mentioned on one of the forums uh, was uh, cigar bar etiquette. There was a big article about cigar bar etiquette. That's in there. a good point. I'm, I'm glad to go. There. I, have a, I have some some uh, opinions. Okay. On this well, as this well. is my opinion, and then okay. you tell me yours. Okay. Um, I think it, and this goes into the whole douchebaggery thing. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna go into a cigar bar. Don't go in, not buy anything, and smoke what you brought. That's just a That's, big no-no. Right. That's like going into McDonald's with a bag of Wendy's and sitting there. They're not right. going to let you eat Wendy's at McDonald's. Right. They're going to kick you out. You know, so, here, and here at, at Calypso, we do not charge for our lounge. Hmm? So it is very rude to assume that you can come in here and just smoke something that you brought off the street. Yeah. You know, if you're paying 40 bucks a month to smoke in a lounge, then yeah, bring what you want. That's fine. But if you're at a place and they're not charging you to smoke in their lounge, buy something. Yeah, go in there and grab a stick. You know? And you can find any number of sticks in the you know four to five dollar range. A lot of the house blends are like three right. fifty or exactly. something. You know, exactly. so you can get a decent smoke and chill out and hang out. Um, I think as you build a rapport mm-hmm. with the particular B and M that you go to, the, you know, some yeah, of that gets may, a little yeah, looser. Yeah. You know, you know, it's like a, a baseball manager is going to treat the star player a little differently yeah. than he treats the. And you know, I'll bring a, I'll bring a, like I said, I'll bring a Herfordor in with a couple of things. But typically, when I bring stuff in, I'm, you know, I'll give Randy a cigar, I'll give Matt a cigar, and then we'll talk about them and stuff. And maybe they'll smoke those. But I'm still buying something. I'm still, Excellent. I've got a humidor here that I keep stuff in, and I'll, I never put anything from home in there. I just mm-hmm. whatever I put, whatever I buy in here is what goes in there. And, Another uh, thing not to do, mm-hmm. and and I, and I, I'm blown away by the people that do this. If you're amongst your friends and no one else, you know, if you know everyone in the lounge. This is okay to do. But if you're amongst strangers, do not talk about what you bought on the internet. Yeah. The prices on the internet or where, you know, near down the street, they'll get the scarf $3 less. Don't do, that's rude to that establishment. That establishment yeah. is allowing you to smoke in their establishment. Don't bring up other establishments. Yeah. That's, that's very rude to the owner and the staff yeah. of the particular B&M. I think a lot of those conversations start based on what you don't have. Like, if it's something if you guys it, yeah, don't absolutely. carry, yeah, right. you know, that can start a conversation. You, me, you, but, know, you got this special Gurkha online. Well, we don't sell that Gurkha online. Talk about that. That's fine. Yeah. But, you know, you know, I got this Rocky Patel 99 online for 20 bucks yeah. or 10 and We've We've talked about that before, and it's, you know, yeah. there there is some good deals online. We're not going to demonize that and say, oh, you can never get anything good online. There's a lot of great deals online if you know what you're buying and you're smart about it. But, you know, you got to support the B&M's because they're, you know, there's not that many places you can smoke anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely support the B&M's, go in there, buy some sticks, start that rapport. Because, you know, if it happens to get to where they start banning stuff, you know the guys that are going to have the underground smoke shops. I mean, come on. Exactly. It's the B&M guys. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> it gets to that point and we're talking prohibition here. Mm-hmm. You better know your B&M owners. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because then they oh. might all go to charging for your, their labs. Exactly. That's right. the only place. You know, God, I would demand. never guess that. That would be horrible. But. Well, we're in Texas, and I don't think that will ever happen in mm-hmm. Texas. Texas, you know, they've, the last, what, six years, you know, Texas legislatures every two years. Mm-hmm. So the last three legislatures, they've discussed the statewide smoking bans and everything. And it always starts out, no smoking anywhere. Any mm-hmm. place where you have an employee, you can't smoke, which would include smoke shop. And then it gets, you know, whittled down, whittled, whittled down, down to where they have exclusions for cigar bars and cigar shops and 
you know. But it never even leaves the committee. It never even gets to the floor to vote. So I, a smoking ban in Texas, I don't see coming anytime yeah. soon, but I could be wrong. Yeah. I could be wrong. We'll hope against hope. And do what you can. Do your part uh, to the listeners out there. If you're not a card carry member of the CRA, definitely sign up. There's Absolutely. a lot of good people out there doing the hard work for you to keep your rights. Absolutely. Um, you know, so you definitely want to do that if you haven't already. And, and contact your congressmen and congresswomen, congresspeople, mm -hmm. and your you know, find out who your local representative is. Just mm -hmm. shoot them an email saying, you know, please uh, don't. It's easier than ever to to get a hold of those people with the advent of the Internet. It Absolutely. is out there, the yeah. interwebs. It's yeah. how you're listening to us. Yeah. So use those avenues to really um, contact those people that, that need to know that you want to maintain your rights and, um, you know, do your part. Um, I've come in here several times when you guys have had stuff to sign up for. Yeah. Like, hey, sign this petition. Right. Right. That's going to go to... You know, wherever he goes, Austin yeah, down to Austin and state his case and, you know, be involved. Absolutely. Um, you know, definitely I think that's when you get to that BOTL level, um, brother of the leaf level, that you really start to pay attention to that type of stuff exactly. and you do get involved. Exactly. Uh, it's important, people, because we, we want to keep this uh, this hobby. It's a great hobby full, full of great people that do great things for the community. Um, I can't tell you how many people I know online uh, in various forums that – give so much back to the community. They're giving for, you know, cancer fund, cancer foundations. They're giving to the troops. They're just very giving people. And uh, you don't see that in, you know, a lot of different clubs that are out there. You don't see people who love Coca-Cola going, I'm going to give to cancer. You know, right. it doesn't happen. Yeah. It's, so yeah, be involved. Mm -hmm. Let's keep this, uh, let's keep this going. For sure. What do you think about the second third here? Tasty. Yeah. It's definitely gotten a little more, uh, full body. I'm getting a more, uh, of a, Almost, I'm getting a tad of that Maduro cocoa that you get. Mm -hmm. Not an overwhelmingly cocoa. It's like Maduro, a dark. It's like does, a dark chocolate. Yeah, to it me. does have that kind of dark chocolate taste. Here yeah, it's like almost a bitter baker's chocolate, but not in a bad way. Because you get baker's chocolate and you have it by itself, it's like, uh, uh, but it's yeah. not that. It's just a light right. coating of it, and it sticks. It stays in the the mouth finishes is, is very much that cocoa, and you get it through the retro hell too. If you yeah. do that again, have you been retro at all? I have. Well, I did the one early, and I did. I've done one since, and it was a little smoother on the. Second yeah, time. it is smoother. Yeah, I don't retrohale a lot because mm -hmm. that inqu requires inhaling, and I'm not a big inhaler. Mm -hmm. And which is why I never liked hookah, but that's a different story. I yeah. don't want to inhale. But it is different. You're not taking yeah. it into your lungs no. like a no. cigarette. No. You know, I think if you do that with a cigar, you're gonna end up coughing your brains out. Oh, uh, have you ever had the where you still have a little bit of smoke left and you're and you don't realize it, and you take a sip of something and you swallow it? Oh and, my god! Yeah, it burns like no tomorrow. Like, you know, it feels like you're about to die. Yeah. So yeah, don't inhale your cigars. Newbies, don't do that. It's don't. bad for you. And it doesn't make the cigar taste any better, believe me. <laughs> Not at all. It, Not it at adds all. nothing to the cigar. Really. No, no. It's just, I mean, you just want to really, you know, take the time to get to know the cigar, uh, take those flavors in, and um, just... You know, maybe roll the smoke around in your palate. Yeah, I do that. You know, I tell people that. It's like, keep it in your mouth, roll it around a little bit, blow it out real slow, because that eases the, uh, the flavor out when you do that. Definitely makes a difference. Um, I love... Just every aspect of smoking cigars. I like the act. I like the taste. Um, I like collecting them and mm -hmm. you know getting trying new things. There's so many out there. We talked to the Esteban Carreras rep uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he mentioned um, how there's like 1,400 different mm -hmm. people out there making cigars, and if they all make one good cigar, that's yeah. a lot of great cigars yeah, to try. We'll never get to try all of them. You yeah, just won't live long enough to try. You all can of them. try, and I certainly recommend it. It will not but... be successful. Right. <laughs> I guess you might if you smoke cigars long enough. Yeah, who knows? long enough. But they're, they're going to come up with more new ones. And so exactly, exactly. So where are you at on the um, on the hard to find stuff? Do you do you ever try to to smoke the hard to find? Because you know you guys have like yeah, the, I have access to a lot of the hard to find. Because you have like the flying feral pig here yeah, and then, and, and the dirty rats and, and, and you know. stuff like that. Uh, I don't seek them out as much as you know. I probably would, would or will if I'm ever not in the business. Yeah, I might seek them out a little more then. But you know. I, I'd like I said, I have access to them, you know. Yeah. Uh, Rick Poehler, a few months ago, gave me a, a Fuente, or I mean, a Hemingway masterpiece. I'd never, I would never have smoked that in my life, but he mm -hmm. gave it to me, and it was great. So, yeah. Uh, not that that's a hard to find, but it is. It's, it's a, up there in know, cost, yeah. It is up there. So, do you find you typically um, stay more in the middle price range on what you smoke? Well, yeah, because because of budgetary reasons. But you know, I'll break out and uh, I'll br break out. <laughs> I'll break down. And splurge, and I'll get you know I'll get the upper level sticks. I mean I I, I need to I know I'm remiss I've not had the feral pig, mm -hmm. 
because they're so, you know, I keep them for the customers. You know? yeah. Matt and I feel guilty if we were to smoke one and deny our customers a chance to come in and buy one. Especially if you like them a whole lot and then you want to smoke yeah, that, more of exactly. them. Exactly. I mean, know? a box of 10, I mean, right. come on, come you know, so, they don't last very long. Now, I've had the Dirty Rat. I like it a lot. Yeah. Uh, because it's Corona sized. I, I think that's a little pricey for a Corona, to be honest. Yes, yeah, it is. Uh, even if your money's not an object, I, I just think that's a little too much for a for a Have you corona. had the uh, the Papa's Fritos yet? No, I haven't. Uh, that I'm is gonna... very close to a dirty rat. Probably a little closer to a nine. Okay. Now it's a if you don't know the uh, Papa's Fritos is a sandwich filler cigar that Drew Estate made with basically trimmings from the fifty two, the nine, and the other Unico series. And it's a it's a great smoke, but it is like twenty something for yeah, four. Twenty four bucks for so four. So it is it's still yeah. pretty pricey, but um. If you haven't had, if you can't get the Dirty Rat, you know, check your B&Ms for those um, Papa's Fritos. You guys have them here, right? 972-761-9903, and we've got them 15% off. Oh, cool. Okay, excellent. Yeah, they come in a cool metal tin that mm -hmm. you can use for other things afterwards. It's a really neat looking little tin. Um, and uh, good smoke. This is a great smoke. I like this one a Isn't lot. Isn't that tasty? It is. I had never heard of this brand before until just now. That's what I love about you guys. You guys have like some stuff that's not kind of really, off the wall. That's kind of what we try to pride ourselves on are the, the smaller boutiques that uh, not everybody has. I mean, everybody can get an Alec Bradley or a Rocky, and yeah. we have plenty of them. When you get your site going, I'm going to tell a lot of people about this, and you're going to be out of a lot of those boutiques. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, that's a good problem to have. Yeah, because I mean, they, they, if you don't know, these guys have like some older um, Viaje stuff, like some Skull and Bones from like 2009. Mm -hmm. and, some uh, some mysteries and some other stuff that's uh, you know some older sticks with some the white, age on them. White label project Candela. We still have some of those. Yep, and but you guys do great deals like five packs and stuff mm -hmm. on some of that we stuff will. too. So. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a lot of good deals. Um, so check us out on uh, Facebook at the Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge. Like us on there, and um, you can always call. We're gonna have the website up soon. Hopefully within the next uh, week or so. Yep, and then you'll be able to buy stuff online. But you can always call and uh, make the purchase and we'll have those special deals for you if you mention the podcast and always you know comment guys put those comments on there let us know when you call in that you heard about us from the podcast because that helps matt kind of track what's going on with everything and lets them know that we can still do this um because i like doing it it's a blast it's fun that's fun it's a good time so usually our second segment is where we kind of branch off the cigar page so mm -hmm. you want to branch off the cigar page in the next segment yeah we can do that for sure okay yeah. So we're going to go ahead and round up the uh, the first segment here, um, the second segment, sorry. We're going to go ahead and round off the uh, second segment here on the second third of the Pedro Martin Fiera. I'll get it. I'm not, By the end of, when I'm driving home, I'll, I'll know the name of this cigar. Pedro Martin Fiera. Yeah. That's a cool looking band. It's a very cool band. It's a, it's a, it's a very nice presentation cigar. A small friendly box or shelf friendly box, so we love that. <laughs> yeah. One thing you love about the the boutiques is that they think of the retailer mm -hmm. on their box. You know, there's so much room, only so much room you have in a humidor. Yeah. You know, and the people like General and Alta, they'll bring these monstrosity boxes, and it takes up all the room in the, in the yeah. humidor. But the boutiques are smart, and they'll put it in nice little cabinets or small boxes, and we love that. Yeah. How many comes in the box? Twenty, I think, right? It's yeah, it's twenty. It's twenty. That's what I read online. Yeah. So we'll be back, guys, after the second third here. See you in a bit. All right, everybody, we're back for the last third of the Pedro Martin Fiera. I got it. You got it. Woohoo! Woo All Brandon, right. Yeah. That, so um, that homework you did during that at the, the break, break yeah. was great. I had to say it like five times in a row, so I get it. <laughs> you don't, yeah, I'm a little past the last third. I am not, um, but it's but uh, your it's, ash is still going well. My ashes, yeah. I had like a two inch ash on mm -hmm. the first half of this thing. You're working on another one. I'm working on another one. Yeah, this is some great. And it, look at that burn lines, like yeah. looking almost razor sharp. And yep. it's really close to being razor sharp. Yeah. And it's just got a. So great I taste. picked right. I picked a good one, huh? Mm-hmm. Thank you, sir. That's one of the things I loved about coming in here was I always knew um, if I came in here not knowing what I wanted to smoke that day or wanting to try something new, you guys always had a great recommendation for me. Thank that's you. where I learned about you know the El Baton. That's where I learned about. Um, uh, this one now. What was the other one? Uh, we did recently the uh, Covenant. Covenant, yeah. yeah. it was great. Also, right. didn't hadn't heard about that before I came in here. Right. And that 10 Años, man. Oh, did you finally smoke that? Oh, it was so freaking good. Isn't that tasty? God, I mean, it's it, he was right. It, it's a uh, very, very Padron, for, yeah, for very Padron tasting and, and much cheaper on the cost. So, yeah, check those out if you haven't, guys. It's a great cigar. Absolutely. 
and they'll always you know offer deals here if you order. Um, yeah, if you call and say you're listening to the podcast and you've commented, we'll work something out with you. Mm-hmm. Maybe free shipping, maybe throwing an extra cigar. We'll call us and test us. Other others have, mm-hmm. so there's no reason why you haven't. Exactly. Get some good cigars in your humidor and smoke them up. So we talked a little bit about um, the different types of cigar smokers and stuff, and you mentioned that you don't. So you have a humidor, though, right? Oh, you yeah. have a humidor? Yeah, absolutely. I have two, actually. Yeah. 25 count and a 20 count. Wow. It's like so. I've got like this huge thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've got way too many cigars at home. But, um, yeah, I mean, I just recently started um, kind of going through all my stuff and picking out stuff that I know I'm going to, that I'm, I love this stuff. I'm going to keep it here. I've got a whole area of stuff that I, you know, I'm going to, these are my daily smokes and I'm going to smoke through these and then I'll move to the good stuff and Mm -hmm. starting to try and age some stuff. I've gotten to the point now where I'm finally going to start buying some boxes because I kind of know what I like now. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'll definitely be doing that. So I'm definitely, I think I'm getting close to the BLTL side of it. I got past the hard to find guy thing. I did that for a while. Right. I was really striving to get all the um, Liga Unico stuff, you know, trying to really get all those, but I've kind of moved past that, I think. Still great cigars. I love them. They taste great. But um, there's so many other cigars out there to yeah, try. You, to, you know, the 1400 theory. We're going to start calling it that. Yeah. The 1400 theory that you referenced in the last segment and the Todd referenced a couple theory. weeks ago. Yes, yeah, so you got to go by the 1400 theory. There's way too many out there for you to try to just smoke one thing. Absolutely. And, you know, you can smoke the one thing. Smoke them to yeah. your heart's content. But try don't be afraid stuff. to try other stuff. Absolutely. It, it is really the second coming of the, uh, the cigar movement. And there's so many... Great blenders out there producing just phenomenal stuff. I'm and, a, uh, my go-to bourbon is Maker's Mark, mm-hmm. but I don't only drink Maker's Mark bourbon. I'm, and I want to try the other stuff, Woodford Reserve. I mean, there's a great Texas one that we're going to be doing a, an event coming up. Yeah, called Garrison Brothers, and it's a Texas bourbon. And yes, you can have it. Still call it bourbon if it's made in Texas. It doesn't have to be made in Kentucky. Yeah, old wives' tale. But yeah, I mean, just because you like. I mean, if you like Coke, that doesn't mean you don't drink Dr. Pepper from time to time. Exactly. So, yeah, you can stick with your go-tos, but try the new stuff. Broaden your horizons. Absolutely. Just like with food, you can't, you know, just eat one type of food. There's all kinds of foods out there, and you just test your palate and figure out what you like. And there's always something new on the horizon. Exactly. And it's a great time to uh, smoke just a crap ton of cigars and try new things. So, on the subject of that we like to talk about all the time, movies. Yes. um, We talked about this the other day, and, and we kind of... Stop talking about it because we wanted to talk about it here. Yeah, Yeah. Um, podcast gold. Yeah, so Hollywood's been doing something lately that has really chapped my ass um, to a point where I really don't want to see movies anymore because nine out of ten of them are remakes, and most of them are bad. But I think there's definitely some diamonds in the rough. There's some remakes out there that are even sometimes better than the original. Absolutely, I can think of one right off the bat that is better than the original. Okay, Ocean's Eleven. Really? You think the remake? better? I like better. the remake okay. better than the original. Now, I love the, you know, the whole Rat whole, Pack and everything. Absolutely. But you if know. you, when I, Ocean's Eleven when I was a kid was a great movie. Yeah. You watch, it, it hasn't aged well. It hasn't aged well at all. You watch it now and you're like, wow, this was a bunch of guys hanging out drinking. But and, yeah, it was an excuse for and them And they to hang made out a movie together. around yeah. it. Yeah, yeah exactly. you know, it wasn't a and, very uh, good movie. And, and Sammy Davis sings a song in there that I think is annoying, EO11 or something. Yeah. And it's just, it's a, and I love Sammy Davis, don't get me wrong, but that, that song is just annoying. I did like the ending better in the original, that mm-hmm. kind of twist ending that I thought yeah. was genius. But that was the ironic, you know, it was... You well, know, that was the, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll but say no, But trust this. me, the, the remake is The remake is a great. better movie. It probably. is a better, it's a better movie. Um, I, I still love the original, and I watch the original. Um, I have it on DVD. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I just find that I watch the, the new one more. Okay. Um, I still haven't seen 12 or 13. So, nope. at least in my opinion and what I've known of your movie tastes, I thought yeah. 12 was... Terrible. Really? It was so bad I didn't want to see 13. Oh, wow. But I've heard 13's a lot better. I don't know. Yeah, I've heard that too. I did like 11. I mean, Mm -hmm. the the Brad Pitt, Matt Damon. Matt Mm -hmm. Damon was in it, right? Matt Damon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I did like it, but I watched, uh, I hadn't even seen the original. So I watched the original the day before I knew I was going to watch the remake to Mm -hmm. see. And, you know, they were such different that I didn't feel like it was. Did you read the book? No, it was a book. No, I don't okay. know. I'm just making that up. Like if the, you book watch both better, those, yeah, the book was better, man. Yeah, the book was better. The novelization was so much better. It had five extra scenes in it. Exactly. Do you remember when they used to do that? Oh, yeah. Back in the, um, God, when I was a kid, before, like, you know, I guess there's VHS and stuff, but VHS yeah. tapes, I don't know if you knew this interwebs, but VHS tapes used to be like 80 bucks back in the day. Oh, and yeah. You couldn't buy them at, you know, Walmart. You had to basically wait till it was extremely used and you could buy it for like $25. Right. But uh, back in those days, um, you saw the movie in the theater and you either got the comic book and you read that Uh 
or you got the novelization and you read mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, if you were lucky, if it was a big enough movie like Star Wars or Indiana Jones or one of those, there was a record that was basically the story of the movie and it had, yeah. you know, dialogue from the movie in yeah. there with some guy going, the story of Star Wars or yeah. whatever, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> I'll tell you a remake that I liked recently and it, I, don't, I wouldn't say I liked it better than the original. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was more realistic than the original. At least the ending was. 310 to Yuma. Mm. I liked that remake. That was a that great remake. That was very, remake. very well done. And I'm not even a big Russell Crowe fan, but I thought he was great in yeah. that role. And Christian Bale? Yeah, Christian Bale. Christian ben Cross great. was awesome in that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Ben Cross was really Luke cool. Luke Wilson even had a really interesting yeah. scene where he was a bad guy. And, yeah, no yeah, kidding. That was kind of cool. Yeah, he's that's not a listed great... on the credits, though. No, he's not. It's he's crazy. Not. That's a great uh, remake, yeah. That's... You know, the ending is certainly more realistic uh, than, the, than the original. Mm -hmm. But the original was great. Glenn Ford. Glenn Ford. Glenn Ford was a great... <laughs> Was a great bad guy. Van Heflin, of course, is always the nice. You know, he was always the good guy. And, yeah. Uh, both well done movies, but I think I liked the remake better. Yeah, I watched the remake more than I watched the original on that one too. Yeah. And one that really surprised me. I won't say it's better than the original because the original is beholden to me. Okay. As one of my childhood favorites, and I'm going to love it till the day I die. Dawn of the Dead remake. Because I thought it not was a very all. good. Not remake. bad at all. Was that the one yeah. in the mall? That was the one in the mall. Yeah. Ving yeah. Rhames. Okay. Yep. That, I really I dug that one I was a lot. pleasantly surprised by that remake. You know, I need to go back and rewatch that because mm -hmm. I saw Shaun of the Dead after that. Yeah. And Simon Pegg has a small scene in Dawn of the Dead. Mm -hmm. I didn't don't remember that. Yeah. Oh, he's in Land of the Dead. Oh, that's Land then, of the Dead. Him and, him and uh, Nick Frost. That's both are why in I didn't Land. see him in the Dawn of the yeah. Dead remake because he he's wasn't in, in it. Yeah, he's in the Romero sequel to Dawn of the Dead. Okay. Day of the Dead. It was Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, then Land of the Dead. Okay, and that's what Simon Pegg That's the one with, yeah. Simon Pegg's in there with uh, Nick Frost, and they they are wearing this like I guess like same clothing or something. I don't know. Okay, but they they play zombie they play zombies in it. Yeah. Okay, cool. that was an okay for George Romero zombie movies. That one was okay. okay. It wasn't great. As cool. He's kind of peaked at Dawn of the Dead, I think. But. Yeah. Okay, other remakes. What do you think? Okay. Wow, that's a good question. I was waiting for you to go next. Oh. so it's my turn to go next. Uh, I said Dawn of the I'll Dead. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to say bad remakes. Yeah. Uh, let's go with. Uh, Shoot, it was a Western. I was just thinking of it. Remake Western? Recently? Yeah. Not hmm. Hmm. All right, we'll, we'll table that for now. Come okay. back to it. Um, All right. What think that you think of one? Because I'm... I actually... Um, your turn? I'm going to get crucified for this, but I actually kind of enjoy the Friday the 13th remake. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. I thought it was entertaining, and the girl it that was naked up. was super hot. <laughs> there were three girls that were naked. Okay. They were all super hot. The one that was like, that one was a really the guy, extended nude scene. And the actor even says, I love your boobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I wonder if that was an ad lib, crap. because they were amazing. She was freaking amazing. Yeah. I think she's. Uh, I think she plays for the other team, actually, from what I've heard. Oh, that's not good. Well, yeah. But um, I thought, films, I really enjoyed it. That was a fun remake to me. It's I thought, like, you I think know, they, that was interesting about that movie was... 40 minutes of that movie went by before they even showed the credits. Yeah. And when they showed the credits, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, what? They didn't show credits already? Yeah. yeah that was kind of shocking, but uh, yeah. that yeah, was I good. I beat the hell out of the Halloween remake. Oh, yeah. The Halloween remake was Halloween Rob was Zombie horrible. should not be allowed to I don't, touch Rob, the Halloween I have franchise. a theory about Rob Zombie. Rob Zombie writes characters that are basically him in movie form. Yeah. Because if you notice in Halloween, everybody had long, stringy, haven't watched it in a million yeah, years, yeah, hair, yeah. and they were all white, trashy, and you know, loud and annoying. I mean, Malcolm McDowell had long, stringy mm -hmm. Rob Zombie hair in that movie. I'm like, really? You're gonna yeah. give that to you know the doctor character that's supposed to be the what? <laughs> I don't know. It just kind of somebody I know that uh, I respect his movie opinion. He said they shouldn't have called it Halloween. They should have called it. Michael Myers goes uh, tears down a house with a two by four. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> there's that scene where he's just beating the crap. It's like, what's yeah. that all about? It was just I, I thought bad. Been, okay, I thought. I can't one. believe they made a second one too. It just I, uh, I tried to watch the. Second I couldn't one. get to the second. I, one. I got. I watched about fourteen, fifteen minutes. But of you it. know, uh, Rob Zombie. I'll give him props for um, uh, House of a Thousand Corp. Was House of a Thousand Corpses? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good, and I liked um, Devil's Rejects. Even though it was probably one of the most uncomfortable movies I watched, yeah. I thought it was a well-made movie. But again, it I didn't the last part of that where you're trying to feel good for the people who did all these bad things. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel good for him. I was like, okay, whatever. I don't get that. But I thought it was an okay movie. So I think he has some potential as a filmmaker. I think he has a voice. He just hasn't really. Yeah, just don't take over my one of my classic movies. That yeah, I no. loved my whole life. Exactly. Uh, back to the see, I grew up. Slasher movies were, were my th my mom loved them. Yeah, she, I mean, you know. Uh, Child Protective Services would arrest her today, but I mean, I saw <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre when I was four. Yeah, 
and that kind of set the set the trap. And I've been a huge fan of slashers. And I remember seeing the very first Friday the Thirteenth mm -hmm. as a kid, and at, at the drive-in. Yeah, so, you know, there's two movies. Yeah, the second one was My Bloody Valentine. Oh, okay. And as a kid, I didn't like it. It wasn't as good as Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, I since went on to to watch it and really liked the mm -hmm. original. I thought the remake of that was very good. The remake was pretty badass. It was very good. And I saw it in 3D, and the 3D was cool. It was like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not a big 3D movie guy, but yeah. that 3D was very effective, and I thought it had a great pace. It had it was really fun. Mm -hmm. And to go with the whole horror movie remake, um, the original Piranha was stupid, and the remake of Piranha was, was extremely stupid. Stupid, but on but purpose. But it was fun. <laughs> it was just so fun. It was so stupid fun. on purpose, and yeah. I loved it. Yeah, but I loved it too. The double D is terrible. Yeah, the du I didn't. I couldn't get through double D. Yeah. I fast forwarded and just David saw the boobs. That's a huge part. Yeah, that tells you enough right there. I would think, but uh, yeah, there've been some good horror remakes. Yeah, they've been doing doubt. better uh, with those, I think, than a lot you know, of the I other remakes. I haven't seen the new Nightmare on Elm Street, and I, want I didn't to, like it. I want to only because I, you know, grew up watching Bad News Bears and yeah. Kelly Leak. Well, I can't remember yeah, the, his name. Yeah, the, the guy. Yeah, he's yeah, also. Yeah, and I was the, glad to see that he finally got landed a big role after years of being. Well, he was in The Watchmen. He was the. Whatever that guy yeah. is with the ink on his face. He was in that uncomfortable movie. Yeah, where, the yeah, Lord plays the got pedophile. Him, yeah, yeah, that was what yeah. got him back on the on the map. I, I was I was glad to see him get the the part of Freddy Krueger, but I, I haven't seen that one yet. I didn't dig it. I okay. really didn't. And yeah. I, and I liked um, the original Nightmare on, Nightmare on Elm Street, and I liked the third one, the Dream Warriors, uh -huh. which has the cheesiest theme ever by Dokken or whatever. Dream Warriors. It was horrible. But, I mean, that movie's Dokken, still... That people, you know, yeah, say horrible after Exactly. That. It's still fun, though. I like Dream Warriors a lot. And then after that, they just kind of trailed off. You know which one I liked of that series? Which one? Because I was more of a Friday 13th Halloween guy. Mm -hmm. Nightmare on Elm Street, I thought, was eh. But I did like the first one. I got it. I just, you know, didn't like the second one. Third one's pretty cool. But I was out mm -hmm. after that. I don't remember seeing it anymore. And then they did that one called The New Nightmare. That was pretty cool. Pretty interesting where they combined reality with... Yeah, where they all play themselves. I liked and that one That was cool. Yeah, I, I dug that, that one. I that one a lot. And I watched it with a friend of mine. She mm -hmm. was a huge Nightmare on Elm Street fan. I told her, you'll like this. You know, I, mm -hmm. She hated it. And I was like, really? I thought this was very well done. Very well, interesting. Well, I think if you're, if you're a fan of the original Nightmare on Elm Street movies, that it, you don't really... You're not on that progression. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you want slasher, funny, stupid things, you mm -hmm. know, with him saying a lot of one-liners. And this was really something different. And I, I, I liked that Wes Craven went out and did something that was, you know, completely different than the rest of the series just to kind of reboot it. Mm -hmm. And I thought it worked. It was one of those when I saw it the first time, I was like kind of on the fence about it. And then it came out on DVD and I saw it again. And I'm like, I dig this movie. Mm -hmm. And I showed it to my wife and she's like, this is not like any other yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street great. movie. It was I cool. Thought, I really liked that movie. Yeah. I don't think it did well at the box office or anything, but no. I, don't, I don't really care if a movie does well at the box but it, office. But it paved, it paved the way for Jason versus uh, Freddy. Which wasn't which bad. Which is awesome. <laughs> which was pretty cool. Yeah. And I, I just knew it was going to be horrible. Yeah, I, I knew it was, but so it was fun. It, that's probably why I, thought I loved it so much, because I was go, went in with very low expectations yeah. and ate it up. Yeah, I did loved too. It. They, I, I really wish they would do more of those, because Hollywood kind of started that... You know, Again. They used to do it back in the day. Yeah, you, you had know, Wolfman, Wolfman versus, versus Frankenstein, Frankenstein whatever, yeah, you know? and they just kind of stopped. I think there's a lot of potential. They did the the Predator versus Alien thing, but I never think they really did that yeah, well. I don't think they put their heart into that one. It just even, I mean, even the one that they're just like, oh, this is going to be a lot more hardcore and more gore, but it was so dark you couldn't see crap. Like I even right. got it on DVD and rented it and watched it. I'm like, it's still dark and you can't see crap. How can you have you know? These you, monsters fighting each other and you can't see anything. Exactly, but along that same line, and this is not not. Not wasn't a remake by any means, but it kind of took that Wolfman versus Frankenstein thing and then put it into a comedy with Abbott and Costello meets mm -hmm. Frankenstein. Have you ever seen mm -hmm. that? I think that's my favorite Abbott and Costello movie. It's, it's hilarious. Awesome. It's great. That's the scene yeah. where the coffin keeps lifting and Lou's yeah. trying to read and the candle <laughs> keeps. That's God. That's a funny scene. Yeah. Okay. Uh, remakes, remakes. 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 Other remakes that are good. Okay. Well, let's go with uh, Tarantino's recent uh, Django Unchained. Okay. I thought that was a good remake, but uh, Karen Tarantino doesn't really remake movies. He right. reimagines them in the true sense of the term because it's right. com almost completely a different movie, especially when you look at Inglorious Bastards, which I thought was also better than the original because the original Inglorious Bastards was just kind of there and you could tell it was a B movie and mm -hmm. not a lot happened and it's over and you're like, okay. But you see the new one and I thought it was really well done. So I'd go, both of those are on my list of good Hollywood remakes. I'd tell you a remake that I don't want to see, so it might be good, I don't know, but mm. the new Fright Night remake just does not mm, it was appeal not, to me. It was not great. Um, I loved the original. I loved the original, too, and I even liked the second one to a degree, um, just because it was more of the same, but it was bad. I'll tell you, <laughs> uh, you know, people, I understand why people hated this, 
But I didn't necessarily hate the Vince Vaughn Psycho, where it was frame by frame, line by line. Mm-hmm. I think what I liked about it was because it was pretty bold to try to do that. I give him credit for having the balls to yeah. take a classic masterpiece and try to just do it frame by frame. And, you know, people know oh, Vince Vaughn's being a scary guy. He's, you know, he's the guy from Wedding Crashers and Dodgeball and, you know. But uh, I thought that version of Psycho was as good as it could be considering what it was trying to yeah. do. I mean, you're trying to redo Hitchcock, and I don't really think anybody can no, redo him. And I kind of, I'm glad that they haven't really started to do that. I'm keep waiting for, you know, North, the Northwest, Northward, yeah, with freaking Brad Pitt <laughs> right, or something. That, you, you know? know, that's exactly who they would cast. You know who they need to cast if they're going to do. Don't listen to this Hollywood because don't remake North by Northwest. Right. George Clooney is, you know, easily he, ten he, years he, ago. George Clooney could have been pulled it off. He'd been great. Yeah, if he was younger, he could have pulled that off. But yeah. don't do it, please. Please, please yeah, don't do please it. don't do it. You know what? A couple of years ago, there was a rumor that they were going to redo Cool Hand Luke, and I was gonna, I was just gonna go, yeah, ape on that one. Don't, don't, no. don't, don't redo Cool Hand Luke. No, there's plenty of movies they don't need to remake, and they just need to stop. Now, did you know horrible remake? We're gonna go into the horrible remake mm-hmm. side now. Barb Wire with <laughs> Pamela, Pamela Anderson, Anderson. I swear to God, is a remake of Casablanca. Are you serious? I am serious. Read the synopsis of it. It's exactly wow. the same story. It's just okay. <laughs> with what's her name? Pamela Along Anderson. The same lines, very similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, shoot, Clint Eastwood. Uh, it was a western. He did. He hadn't done westerns in a while. Not, not unforgiven. Not unforgiven. No, no, no. It was Pale, Pale, Pale Rider. Rider. Was it's yeah. Shane? Basically, yeah, it is. And I didn't realize it. I watched it, liked it on its own, mm-hmm. and then I found out. And then I, you know, became more familiar with Shane, which is my favorite <clears throat> western of all time. Yeah, Shane's awesome. Okay, yeah. And then, you know, once I heard it and then rewatched it, I went, oh, it is. So I'd, I'd classify that as a good remake. Mm-hmm. It's not Shane, though. No, it's not Shane. You can never have, I mean, Shane was probably one of the first movies I cried at as a mm-hmm. man. It's like I can say I cried mm-hmm. at Shane. There's about probably three movies I can say. Okay, I'll say this. Any Western, you know, Shane I can cry at. Mm-hmm. Um, Old Yeller. Old Yeller. Any, pretty much any movie with animals that die. Yeah, I can't handle it. <laughs> Marley and me, I didn't break up, but I, I almost got it. there. I lost it because I'd put a dog down a few, yeah. a few years before watching that movie. And uh, another one, and I, I don't like this actor, Richard Gere. I hate him. I don't yeah, like the guy. I don't like him either. But Hachinko is a I movie seen that, but I've heard. you got to see. Yeah, it I've heard it will it. just break you up, man. It's just it's based on a um, like a true story or a myth about a man's bond with a dog as a samurai. Oh, okay. It's just you know that whole okay. thing with the... You know, the guy died, and then the dog waited for him, and basically you didn't died cry at Field for of him, Dreams. Yeah. yeah, I cried Field of Dreams. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, okay, sports movies too. Yeah, sports yeah. movies you're allowed to cry at if you're a guy, mm-hmm. um, preferably not in front of your lady. But yeah, you, right. know, you can shed a tear for those. Uh, you know, I, I I get almost teary at the end of Dead Poets Society. Yeah, when I stand on the desk and everything. Yeah, that's a good moment. That's a great, that's scene. a great, that's a great, moment. great moment. But I thought of another remake, and this was actually a TV remake of a classic movie. Okay, High Noon. Had I Tom Skerritt in it. And yeah, he played the. I never uh, saw that. Uh, Gary Cooper. You know what's another? You know another remake of High Noon? What's that? Outland. Oh yeah. Okay, I can. The see space that. remake with Sean Connery. That. It's the same exact story, but it's Sean really? Connery in space. Wow. <laughs> Not very good. <laughs> really? Well, you know they said the uh, uh, Avatar. It yeah. dances with wolves, basically. Well, yeah. I, it's very I saw the, the best. The best thing I saw in that was someone put this on the internet. They took the Pocahontas script. It was mm-hmm. like the uh, the treatment for Pocahontas, the Disney right. Pocahontas, right. and scratched it out and put Avatar on it and just scratched out a couple of the details. <laughs> and it's like verbatim really? Avatar. It's wow. like, wow, okay, so it's basically Pocahontas slash dances with blue people. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I wasn't a big fan of Avatar. I thought the, the 3D was really great. I saw it in a the theater in 3D and was like, Blown away by how good the 3D was and the depth and everything that went along with it. Technically, it was a good movie. Yeah. But you see it again later, and you're like, this movie has nothing. I mean, it's really just a on the surface, don't care about the characters blah, kind of movie. Roger Ebert had, I think it was Roger Ebert had a great line about Last Samurai, the mm-hmm. Tom Cruise thing. Yeah. He said, I liked it better when it was called Dances with Wolves. Yeah, so exactly. Like, yeah, same thing. Same but thing. It, it is yeah. very. Yeah, Last Samurai is his Dance with Wolves, really. Well, we're uh, coming. To- Coming to the end of the cigar and the, oh, the show. And the show. We're still talking. <laughs> leave, always leave them wanting more. Exactly. Well, this has been a great cigar. I love it. It's um, very tasty, and it definitely got more bold on the last third. It's um, definitely gotten into the full-flavored, full-bodied range. Um, a little more complexity. I'm definitely getting a little more pepper on the end. Uh, the leather has turned into a very earthy mm-hmm. kind of a... Um, I wouldn't say musty, but it's got that earthy feel to it, mm-hmm. kind of peaty. Kind of, it would go great with a really peaty scotch. I think. I think a smoky, smoky yeah. peaty scotch. I was just getting ready to say that. 
this Johnny Walker Black has a little smokiness to it. Yeah. And it's it's just been a perfect balance with this cigar. Yeah. So definitely try this cigar. I promised a special. Oh, yeah. 972-761-9903. If you buy four Pedro Martin Fieras mm-hmm. torpedoes, I'll throw in a free one, and we'll throw in free shipping. Awesome. All right, so don't forget always to um, subscribe to us on iTunes and give us a comment there, five stars preferably with some comments. We want to know what you guys think. What are we doing good? What are we doing wrong? What do you want us to review? Um, Also, hit us up on YouTube. Check out the video there and comment as well on there, Podomatic and Spreaker as well. And um, as always, we'll be back next week with another episode. Let us know what you guys want us to review, and we'll see if we can make it happen. Absolutely. Thanks Thanks a lot. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you. You guys have a good night or day. Bye.